come together to learn about our character traits. Sounds pretty cool? Yeah! Awesome. I tell you what, before Jenny gets out here, let's go ahead and do the character definition before she turns this all into mass confusion. Too late. Jenny, how do you look like the Lucky Charms guy? Well, cause tomorrow is Saturday. It's St. Patrick's Day, you know? That's true, and they say everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Yes, and... So, do you have something special you're doing for St. Patrick's Day? Yes. Why are you dressed this way? Yes, because of my great-great-grandpappy, Paddy. That was his name. As in St. Patrick? Well, you could call him that. But his full name was Patty O. Furniture. Patty O. Furniture. <laughs> yes, his family left him out all night. I don't know why, though. I never quite understood that. Jenny. Yeah, but Patty O. Furniture, he always stood up for what was right. In fact, I remember often they tell a story about the day that the village shamrock was chopped down. Wait, wait. A shamrock was chopped down? Yes. But, but shamrocks are tiny. They're like this big. Chop down something that's only this big. With a wee little axe. Oh. Yeah. Well, they held a town meeting to talk about who in the village could have chopped down the mighty shamrock tree. No, no, Jim. Mighty and shamrock do not go together. Well, my great great grandpappy Paddy, he knew that he had done it. And his friends knew that he had done it too. Well, so he did what he could have done when the mayor came out and said, Who chopped down this mighty shamrock? Paddy O'Furniture knew he had to do what was right. And so he did. He went and he said, It was that man over there, Agnes O'Sullivan. He did it. I tried to stop him. What? Ah, no, just kidding. I was having a little fun with you. No, he knew that he had to do what was right. And so he went in front of the whole town and he said that he had done it. And then he had to tell the truth because telling the truth was the right thing to do. You know, that just happens to be what we're talking about today. Because when you stand up for what is right, you are showing your character. Fantastic. I brought this here to play a little music in honor of my great, great grandpappy Patty. Here we go. You know what, Jenny? How about we, we save that for the end and we will endure, I mean, we will enjoy your music after the definition. We'll do the definition first. Fine, then go ahead. Okay. Boys and girls, I need your help. Would you please make a drum roll on your legs for me? Now, boys and girls only, let's get ready to do the character definition. Are you ready? I'll go first, and then you say it after me. Here we go. Conviction. Standing for what is right, even when others don't. Now, your turn. Conviction, standing for what is right, even when others don't. Good job. All right, now parents, we need your help. You speak in the language, the Irish language, the Gaelic language. Let's hear you say, corn beef and cabbage. Corn beef and cabbage. You see me? Yes. I see more than two people out there. Well, I only heard two people, and one of them was me. Okay, let's try it again now. Is this for the parents? We're not going to have to make them stand up, are we? No. Yeah. Okay. Let's leave it like this. How about flowers? Flowers. Clovers. Clovers. That's bad. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, parents. Now, ready for my music. Here we go. <laughs> Come on. Here we go. I hope they can't hear this in the clubhouse.
I think it's actually the perfect time. Kimmy, you have every right to be upset. We all do. But statistics show that when somebody loses their temper, 75% of the time, somebody gets hurt. Exactly. <sighs> Don't you realize, Kimmy, we just can't take that chance. Sure we can. No. Kimmy, do you realize that 75% is three out of four? That may seem like a huge number, but in this case, it's just not enough. What? We gotta make sure Biff gets 100% of what he deserves. We gotta use our heads. We gotta be clever. We gotta be devious. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking. Maybe I can find something in this race manual book. There's gotta be something in here so that we can steal that trophy back from Biff. <sighs> no, it's gotta be bigger than that. It's the dummies book. <laughs> what? If you're been looking for vengeance, this is where you go. <laughs> Rachel? Hey, guys. Rachel, don't worry about it. We saw everything that happened. Yeah, you know what? You were miles ahead of Biff in that race. You totally should have won. There was no way anyone could have ever seen that wheel come off by itself. No, even the judges have to recognize that there was something wrong there. You got totally ripped off. You're going to get what's coming to you. Oh, yeah, and Biff's going to get what's coming to him, too. Oh, yeah. But guys, the judges, I mean, they're going to have the ceremony at 4 o'clock. No, listen, we've got to figure out something to get that trophy away from Biff. He can't get that. Or they could just give me runner-up. No. Runner-up? Nothing! I'm going to find a rule that gives you the trophy the rightful owner. <laughs> and sweet, sweet revenge. <laughs> guys, I mean, that's sweet and all, but don't waste your time, really. I, I mean... He messed with my tire way before the starting line, so I don't think there's anything that the judges can really do. Don't be so sure about it. Here it says to make sure your car has plenty of fuel. Never leave the pits unprepared. It's Tyler needs a bike race. I'll find another one. <laughs> Come on, guys, really. I just don't think there's anything you can do. Listen, Rachel, there has to be something in here. I mean, you can't just mess with somebody's bike. That's, you can't do that. There's, we've got to find a rule. There's in, in here somewhere. Oh, and Biff messed with my tire. I just wanted to, oh, I just had to find something, some way to get back in. Like, like when swimming freestyle, swimmers must, must not touch the wall with any part of their bodies. <laughs> Tyler, buddy, I think we're going to need to stick to rules of a bike race. What do you think? Yeah, listen, I got it, Rachel. I'm going to study this. I'm going to find something. I swear to worry. We will figure it out. I'm going to get it. Come on, you can't go off finding vengeance for me. Oh, man. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Tyler, wait, wait, your book. Oh, man, I know they mean well, but I don't know. Maybe Tyler's got something in here that would help. All right, never let the opponent gain the advantage. There's something here. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, I really shouldn't let Biff have the upper hand. i got to get back in for what he did. Man, how can I get Biff really good? Let's see. This might work. If someone does something to harm you, you should turn the other cheek and not try to get even. What? Where did that come from? Of course I should get even. I know. I could just... Dude. I mean, maybe I could... Dude. Ugh, oh, dude. Do what you're supposed to do when others 
Lord. I show conviction by being quiet and causing others doubt. If somebody um, is um, fighting somebody outside or somewhere, um, then stand up for them and tell them to stop. Like if my brother's not taking up his legos, there's one of the go left and I think he's still there. Do right to do right. Do right to do right. 
vacation this month, and I want to know which one of them is going to take home a bike today. And when your teachers or staff have seen you showing conviction, they put your name down in this bucket. And then Mrs. Gard announces those on the announcements in the mornings, right? Right, Zimbo? Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. You guys like hearing those on the announcements? Yeah. Does it make you proud of yourself when you know that you're working hard? Good. And then at the end of the month, or in March, at the middle of the month, Seth, we will draw one name out of this box or out of this bucket for a student who um, has shown that character trait and they win a bike, right? So this month, the winner of the bike, this student showed conviction by showing the whole class how to get quiet. She is a second grader in Mrs. Malko's class. It goes to Alyssa Tolbert. Alyssa, do you have a bicycle? I'm very proud of you for showing conviction this month. Is it hard to be good when everybody else is kind of being naughty? Yeah. Well, I'm really proud of you. You did a good job. Do you like your bike? What do you think? You gonna ride around town? All right, just be careful and wear a helmet, okay? All right. <laughs> Remember, that could be you next month. If you're showing next month's character trait, maybe you would be the winner of a bike, okay? All right, let's see what's going on back in the clubhouse. Man, I know I gotta turn the other cheek, but this is just so hard. We found it! We did it, we did it, we did it! Don't you worry, Rach. We snow him well, in the thigh. <laughs> well, guys, really, there's something that I need to tell you. No, what? listen. You don't need to tell us anything. It's what you need to tell the judges, okay? We have the proof right here to get you the trophy that's rightfully yours. Check it out. Look at it. Right here. Contestant Rule Section 4, Paragraph 2, Subsection 3A says, No contestant shall wear any clothing or accessories that can be interpreted as a sponsorship. No business or private person shall exchange goods or services for publicity gained in the Metro bike race. Booyah! <laughs> but guys, Ben messed with my tire way before the starting line. I mean, he loosened the hub. I had to push the thing across the finish line. Rage. It has nothing to do with sponsorship. Rage, Rage, stay with us right here. Listen, listen carefully. We couldn't find anything in here that would disqualify him for messing with your bike. But what we did find was a rule that he broke that will disqualify him from the race. Then you get the trophy. Now, here's the proof. <laughs> Tina's junkyard? Yeah. Biff and Tina had a deal. Biff wears the shirt and Tina gives him extra parts for his bike. <laughs> and lets him play with her Rottweilers. <laughs> Guys, I mean, I really appreciate this. Yeah, we knew you would. We worked really hard on it, yeah. <laughs>
We will begin the award ceremony by recognizing this year's runner-up. He's begun the winner every year until now. But I'm sure he's going to get something to say for all of us gathered here today celebrating the best in sports. Please join me in congratulating Rachel Wynn Reynolds. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I mean, it's kind of weird getting my name called as the runner-up this year. And to tell you the truth, it's kind of weird looking at that trophy down there and holding this one here. But I would like to say something about the man who crossed the finish line first. I know what the mayor said a minute ago about people waiting all year long for this moment. And it's true. I I've waited, and I know Biff waited too. I know he planned out how that I was going to ride the race today, and, and I've been thinking about all afternoon what I'm going to say. Well, what I'd like to tell Biff, judges, Mr. Mayor, is thank you. Thank you for a great race. And congratulations, Biff. I mean, I always know you wanted to win first place. I really hope we can race again next year, and I know you'll try your best. Thank you. Show him the shirt. You'll get the trophy for sure. But guys, listen. I've got to stand for my conviction. I have to do what's right, even when others don't. What? Maybe she's not feeling well. We better check on her. Check on her. Well, guys, I thought for sure that Rachel was going to really throw the book at Biff on that one. Instead, she threw all of us for a loop, didn't she? Yeah, you know, it's kind of weird holding this trophy this year, but it's going to remind me more than just winning. It's also going to remind me that I used my conviction and I stood up for what was right, even when others didn't. So, so, so the shirt thing is out? <laughs> it's out. Sorry, Tyler. Guys, I've got a couple questions for you. I was just thinking the other day, you know, sometimes we have situations where we have to stand for our conviction, so I need your help. Let's say you have a substitute teacher one day. And all the other kids in your class, well, they're just causing a ruckus. They're just being so wild and loud. Could anybody tell me, what should I do if I'm using my conviction? What should I do? Let's see. Right here. What should I do? Should I be quiet or should I be loud? Be quiet. Okay, so I've got to stand for what's right. You know, I was thinking the other day that it would be really nice to get a good grade on this test. And one of my good friends, she sits next to me, and, and I really thought if I just looked at her paper, and you know the friend behind me was saying, yeah, do it, do it, just, just look. She always gets the good grades. But what would my conviction tell me to do? What would my conviction tell me to do? All right, you guys are getting the idea. Thank you so much. Conviction, let's say it one more time. Standing for what is right, even when others don't. Hey, guys, we're really glad that you followed your convictions and took second place in the race. You know what time it is, Columbia? It's time to say goodbye. Stand up. Parents, we want to invite you to join us next month as we celebrate hope which is recognizing that something good can come out of something bad. Friday, April 20th. Let's put those hands together and let's celebrate three parades.